Hi! Welcome, dearest of all my audiences. Today's video has a theme, and that theme is decommissioning. What's behind me is a slowly getting decommissioned mineshaft, and what's on the other side of the camera is a Weehu Aigo Turbo Kids trailer with its own independent drivetrain, which is also getting decommissioned, prepared for sale, for whatever amount of money I'll be able to get for it. And because I'm preparing it for sale, I'm going to show you all the features of this product and show you all the failures because that's the more interesting part. Alright, so you might want to ask why I'm selling it. And the reason is fairly simple. My kid outgrew it, obviously. Um, I had this trailer for about two years, two and a half years. And it has a total kilometrage or mileage. But kilometers are something that I am more accustomed to. So it has a total kilometrage of about 3,000, maybe 4,000, difficult to say. Uh, me and my, my daughter spent uh, each weekend riding somewhere, so the kilometers tend to stack up. Anyway, uh, throughout this entire career, as a piece of equipment I'm using, it has uh, failed or surprised me in a few interesting ways. So let's go through all the interesting places that stuff happened. You will see that uh, the trailer is very experienced. So this is the thing we're discussing in its uh, full glory so let's take a look uh, the trainer is mounted to the bike using a sleeve that goes on the uh, on this uh, the seat post uh, the manufacturer provides six sleeves for uh, different uh, seat post diameters uh, uh, the kid sits here in a semi recumbent position I think that low uh, long wheelbase recumbents have this kind of seating. It's uh, very comfortable, my daughter didn't complain even if she had to sit for two or three or four hours when we were uh, touring with my wife. Uh, the, the child has an independent drivetrain, it's just a single speed, there's a 42 chain ring in the side of this case and uh, 62 uh, freewheel single speed at the back. There's a 20 inch wheel at the back and the entire, uh, the entire thing is sold with several options. For example, this one originally had a, a simple rack here which, which has two very small planners. Alright, this is the seat. There are uh, belts to uh, keep your child safe, so she or she or whatever else won't fall out. Uh, this trailer is meant for children aged 4 to 8, possibly. I think the maximum weight is 30 kilograms. I haven't checked. Oh, how would I check that? Anyway, uh, this is fairly comfy. You can buy this with an extra padding. This one doesn't, doesn't have it, but my daughter didn't complain. Uh, you have here uh, handles, so uh, there is something to hold on to. There is, a, there is space garbage but you can keep it water bottle here the water bottle here there is a, a space here for something else I don't know, a snack or something like that rear wheel is 20 inch this is still the original tires uh, this, the trailer is held with this boom to the bike which is held here by a, by a screw originally was something else I'm going to talk about it later and that's just about it. So, these are all the features. It didn't blow up on me. It behaved very predictably. We never fell. We never had a crash. Nothing really bad happened. Uh, I just say that maybe it's not really comfortable if, if your child is going to sit in it for you know, four hours. So, uh, it breaks. For the principles behind this, the concept is fairly sound. However, I'm making this video because for the 400 euros I paid for it, or approximately 500 dollars, I don't know the current price, this is the lowest quality garbage I ever bought. And I am a massive gear slut and I buy Chinese stuff all the time. The quality level of this thing is something about 100 dollar bicycle shaped object you can buy in the, I don't know, that Walmart if you're in the US or whatever else. Then. The only thing that saved this particular thing is the fact it's made of steel, so it's quite a bit of excess material and it's overbuilt quite heavily. So, 
in two and a half years uh, since I bought it and these are all the failings and all the failures I had with this thing. All right, uh, the trailer is attached to the bike with a bracket like this one. It's actually a very good design. Uh, it's held here and if uh, anything happens, it can't just free itself. It's held to the entire... Uh, this piece is held to the boom with a pin like this one. And there's a safety uh, wire here so it won't come out. Great. Now, first of all, there's play here and it causes a uh, never-ending amount of click clackety if you ride over anything that's not smooth pavement. So, that's one problem. The second problem is that uh, the user manual won't tell you that if you put the safety wire in this position and you ride, uh, the loads on the, on the safety pin or on the pin are going to cause it to rotate and apparently or invariably at certain point break. Uh, this uh, trailer had two such pins with a safety wire and one doesn't exist anymore because at one point simply the safety wire broke and uh, the pin could make its uh, way out of this of this hole and uh, detach the entire trailer. If the safety pin is in the lower position then the same force that forces the safety pin here is going to cause it here and nothing happens. And since the user manual doesn't tell you that, you have a point of failure here, which is a 50% chance of something happening. Obviously, you should uh, take uh, precautions when riding anything to check whether it's in sound technical condition. However, that's something that should be mentioned in the user manual. Now the crank set is in this beautiful chain case. The cranks are, I think, 110 millimeters long, so space for a child, that's good. However, the chain originally was uh, led to the, to the rear wheel using a thick plastic tube, which, obviously, when your kid tries to pedal, causes the amount of noise that will wake the dead. Moreover, if you're riding on anything that's not smooth pavement, once again, it will click, 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 infuriating amount of noise that not, it's not really justified. So what I had to do in order to keep the chain from rubbing on the on the thighs of my kid is to put the chain like uh, manufacturers or uh, home uh, builders of recumbents do, which is use a garden hose like this one and this one. This is very silent, doesn't cause much of a problem. And it's something that was solved years ago and the designers and whomever uh, ordered this under the ride WeHu, WeHu brand should know this. That's not really elegant and that's infuriating uh, when you're riding for a longer, uh, for a longer distance. All right, so this is the rear end of the trailer. And this originally had a small rack and small panniers which came with the with the trailer which were branded by WeHu. Obviously, uh, because of reasons I'm going to divulge in a few minutes or a few seconds, I replaced them with this contraption of pipes and a uh, regular bicycle rack. And the reason is that you know, the original uh, rack that came with the trailer and its uh, original panniers where the rack was made of a very flimsy wire and the panniers were, were made out of a very uh, thin and a very flimsy material. The re end result was that if you loaded the, the, the panniers to capacity they would simply just get torn and in my case that was about approximately three months into riding this thing and uh, the space the clearance between the tire and the rack was so tight that if you loaded the panniers to capacity they would simply uh, rub on the on the tire. Less to say that three months later I just installed this because the original thing was not usable anymore. Regarding the storage capacity you can see that this uh, that this weave here is torn from whatever held it and that happened literally on the first ride it's just such a flimsy material and such a flimsy design we carried i think a shirt here i don't know i just came home and saw this being broken
you can see here that the trailer doesn't have a mod guard and that was original with the trailer as well but it doesn't really need it because there's stuff here that protects from uh, from being sprayed with mud however since this gets sprayed with mud it would be very helpful you if you could just take this cover and wash it unfortunately the designer of this trailer thought that it's a great idea that in order to take it out you need to uh, disassemble the entire seat all right so this is the wheel of this of this trailer and you can see how the designer cheapened out this is a regular screw on freewheel hub from china which you can buy for two dollars this is the free will that costs probably the same amount of money and it's just held on the regular axle uh, which is 10 millimeters just from one side there's no support here so anything goes through here this is an obvious failure point thankfully this never happened and i hope it wouldn't happen because that would be a catastrophic failure and pretty dangerous too so you know and obviously this should be designed with either specific part that was designed to be held from one side or it should be supported from both sides this is bad practice all right so this is the crank set so your kid can crank great no? and it obviously works most of the time I don't think it was meant to be an auxiliary drivetrain however if you took this up you will notice that you will notice that the crank set isn't spinning freely inside its chain case and the reason for this is very simple and i'm going to show it to you right now There you go, this is the chain case from the inside, the chain ring is 42 teeth. If you take a look, you'll notice that this chain ring is crooked and it has been since the trailer was new. Now it's spinning freely, however if I put the chain case on it, it starts to rub and it rubs so heavily that it makes cranking more difficult than it should be. Now the one extra problem with the crank set, which I can't show it to you now because I fixed it a few weeks ago. Uh, the bottom bracket here isn't a cartridge unit, which cost five dollars. It's even cheaper, uh, the loose cap and, uh, cap and cone unit, which cost three dollars. And obviously uh, this cap and cone unit undone itself uh, a few weeks ago which prevented my child from spinning and apparently that day she wanted to so she wasn't really happy about it moreover uh, the bottom bracket here isn't uh, up to spec so when I torque the bottom bracket cups so I had no, uh, no ability to you know, undo itself well it stopped spinning and if I uh, did it just right uh, so it spins freely it will undo itself at some point and now ladies and gentlemen I present to you the icing on the cake when this trailer was new uh, the boom was held to the uh, main body of the of the trailer using a safety pin like this one this one is used for the front and uh, the, uh, these two parts were just sleeved onto each other and there was a little play between them so this was here there was a little play obviously as you write it was clack 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 and at some point it started to click clack itself into self-destruction it was the original part here uh, between the, these welded two parts these welded two angles started cracking along uh, the edge here because the brilliant uh, designer of this piece thought that it would be fitting to make two square uh, tubes sleeve onto each other and didn't uh, occur to him or her that uh, there's going to be cracking here there was no preload here so it would be loose it would uh, work itself out of here and the stress riser around here on this edge would cause cracking here here 
here and here, especially uh, in this place and on the other side as the uh, inside piece was working itself uh, within the outside. I noticed that something about six months into using this trailer I was monitoring whether it's the cracks are uh, increasing or not. They were increasing. So when uh, this pin broke on the other end I just decided to modify the, the mount. So at first I added a bolt which is uh, eight millimeters which is thicker than this one. This is six millimeters. I added this bolt and as the cracks progressed at certain point I just said that F it and took uh, this to the welder and added these two angular pieces here and it held fabulously ever since. So there you have it. This is the high quality product from China which I later got to know. Uh, this is the Weihu iGo Turbo kit trailer after two and a half years of high, hard usage. So. Of course you should ask why wouldn't I warranty it and it boils down to two things. One, uh, I would be trailerless for about I don't know, six or four weeks before I get a new one. And my kid doesn't take lightly if I don't take her to the ice cream trip. She's special in certain, in certain ways. And two, what I would have gotten would be another Wii Huai Go Turbo, which would start failing in the same manner. So after discussing the the problem when problems started we just decided me and my wife that I should just you know, start fixing the issues once they uh, arise and hope nothing is gonna break because apart from this little things that that happened they were mostly annoying I didn't really noted that uh, the, the trailer is cracking or started to crack uh, once I started modifying it to fix the issues it was pretty much the warranty is dead so it was one or another and if I got in the same thing that then the same problems would start and I would be in the same situation just later so there was simply no point in doing that and there you go after two and a half years it's still usable to my surprise but I wouldn't recommend uh, this product to anyone because well, it's really low quality, it's Chinese uh, bicycle shaped object quality level. So I know, 100 bucks, okay, specialized product, so 200 bucks maximum. It's simply not worth the money you pay for it, and unless it's the entire issues are fixed in one way or another. It's not going to be worth uh, 500, 400 euros or 500 euros at this point. Moreover, and the entire thing is made out of steel, it's essentially it reeks cheap, it, it reeks, we're saving, in a, uh, we're cutting every corner we possibly can because, well, why would we? Alright, this is everything I have to say about this at this very moment, although I probably could say many sour words about this entire thing because mostly just a massive letdown for what I've got for the money I paid. So, if you like the content, consider subscribing. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I hope to see you on the next one.